Hello everyone, I'm Brahm Mithra. Uh, welcome to what is the 12th episode of the Kingdom Death Monster Let's Play. Uh, this year, uh, last I mean last year we fought the Kingsmen, this year we're going to be fighting a Giga Lion. Um, it's the equivalent of like a, a White Lion level 2, the one that we're fighting. You can also fight a Giga Lion uh, that's equivalent to level 3 White Lion, but there's no way we could take that out. Uh, the Giga Lion is much harder than a level 2 White Lion. But uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try to do next uh, Lantern Year. Maybe we'll do just an antelope. But then we have the hand fight. Then after that, maybe the dung beetle. So hopefully that's how it goes. We'll see how the Giga Lion treats us. But um, it's quite the fight. So... I know it's also been brought to my attention I was doing critical hits incorrectly. Um, so the other videos prior to this, you might have seen where I critical hit on hit locations that do not have a critical hit effect. I always thought that you could critical, it just had no effect. But, so I, I was playing that wrong. You, you can't even critical unless there is a critical hit effect. So moving forward, uh, that's how it will go. Luckily, it's never affected really any of the outcomes because the um, bow user was going to hit on a two anyway, and critical hits don't cause extra wounds when using that bow because they're not savage or devastating. I mean, so um, luckily it never had any effect. But moving forward, yes, I was playing incorrectly. You should not cause a wound. You should not cause a critical hit unless there is a critical hit effect on the hit location card that's drawn <laughs> so yeah um also in this episode i make another mistake with the giga line um again it it doesn't really play into effect of anything um but if anybody notices what it is that i did uh kudos to you <laughs> so as always uh thank you very much for everyone who watches and supports this, your support is amazing. Um, I'm so humbled by it, and hopefully you enjoyed this year, this Lantern Year. Uh, thank you very much. So here we are, all set up, face the giggle to hunt a giggle lion. Uh, we've got four random hunt events, then two monster hunt events, plus overwhelming darkness, which we'll have to do. So uh, with first, we're just gonna do the first one with arrow. Looks like it's a random hunt event. So, on that side, arrow. Go first. Uh, the white random hunt event is going to be 78. 78. Dead Great Game Hunter. The survivors find a corpse dressed in brightly colored clothing clutching something to its chest. The event revealer may investigate. If they do, they gain plus one courage and roll 1d10. If any survivor has a whip, they lash the corpse from afar, add plus 40 to roll. Otherwise, roll again on the hunt event table. So we don't want to roll again because we don't want to randomly die. <laughs> um, okay, so... Um, um, let's see, the survivors, the event revealer may investigate. So that would be Arrow. So I guess we'll just let Arrow investigate. She rolls 1d10. A 10? Wow. Uh, your hands contain a jeweled bottle filled with uh, chartreuse liquid. Gain plus one frenzy, frenzy drink gear. Um, she can actually carry that because she doesn't have full gear grid, so she's got a frenzy drink gear. Neat. All right, so now Arrow's gone. Moving right along, the next most important person is Aurora. Another random hunt event. Random hunt event. 62. It was almost the same page. It would have been great. 
Uh, 62, Space Between the Rocks. The survivors are distracted by a dark crack in the endless sea of stone faces. If any survivor has a pickaxe, we don't. Uh, could have gained an iron, but we don't. Otherwise, each survivor rolls 1d10. The lowest scoring survivor becomes a straggler. Okay, so let's roll to see who the straggler is. Um, let's see, prepared, prepared. Okay, so Aurora's prepared. Um, so prepared lets you add your hunt experience to your stragger rolls. Um, I think, right? That's what prepared does? Now I forget what prepared does. Um, pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah, it's your hunt experience. Okay, so we'll get this out of the way first. Aurora, she gets to add her hunt experience. That's a lot. That's going to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, that's a 17. Okay. Uh, doubt she's going to be the straggler. Rodin also is prepared. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's an 11. Uh, okay, so 17 and 11. Now for Victor. 6 and Arrow now. 8. So uh, Victor is the straggler. Okay. Oops. So, Victor is the straggler. Okay, the straggler stoops to gaze into the depths and refuse, refuses to stop staring. When the other survivors drag them away, they're babbling incoherently. Whatever they saw changed them forever. They gain one random disorder. Okay, so Victor. Let's gain one random disorder here. Okay. Shuffling up the disorders. Random disorder for Victor, my buddy, and it's going to be that one. Oops, and it is. Oh, prey. Uh, you are prey. You may not spend survival unless you are insane. Okay. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> Victor is not insane. Okay. So Victor has prey disorder. I don't know why I just said that was Victor. <laughs> this isn't actually Victor, it's Kenna. Um, okay. So Kenna... Uh, Kenna is the one who got prey. So Kenna got prey. Oh, great. She's going to get rid of Hoarder. I really need to, um, fix this with Aurora and Kenna being on the back, back of the page together. I'll have to fix that. I'm going to. Okay. So that was actually Kenna. So now Kenna will actually move forward. Another random hunt event for actual Kenna this time. Okay. Now another random hunt event. Uh, six. Faceless statue. The survivors come upon a faceless statue holding a shining lantern. Basking in the warm light, the survivors are renewed. Each survivor gains one survival. The survivorment, if the settlement has the survivorment, if the settlement has sculpture, um, I don't think we do gain the one understanding. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We don't have sculpture. I will double check, but I'm pretty sure we do not have sculpture. No. Yeah, I don't know. Why would I have innovated that? It's not that good. Um, okay, survivors rest here longer. If they do, survivors heal all injury levels and lose all armor point one hit location. However, they lose track of their quarry movement one space away from the survivors. Survivor heals more than five lost armor points this way. Um, if all survivors are insane, they cannot rest longer. It doesn't matter. Uh, we, we could have rested longer because Arrow's not insane. Uh, but we won't. Um, 
So then when uh, Arrow got a courage, I forgot to mark that. So Arrow got that courage for investigating the dead game hunter. Uh, the dead great game hunter. No. They got the disorder. Okay. Uh, okay, now for Rodin. Doing the last one. Oh, it's this sword in the stone again. Uh, I don't think anybody has sword proficiency. Uh, okay, so, crusted with flanking layers of dried blood, an, obli an obelisk juts from the ground. From its center protrudes a pristine hilt. Nominate a survivor to reach for it. Roll 1d10. Add their sword proficiency to the roll. Um, basically, uh, it's, can they die? Yes, they could die. Two event damage. Uh, it's not even really worth doing this. I mean, I want to do it because it's new content and I want to get it in for people who haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either. I've never rolled the 10 plus on this. Uh, I just don't want to suffer too damage and I don't want to die. I don't have anybody with sword proficiency either. Alright. Um, we're not going to do it. <laughs> we're not going to do it. I'll start working on someone for sword proficiency, but for right now, we're not going to do it. Okay. Uh, now I get to restart all over again. So I don't want to use Arrow, and I don't want to use Aurora. So Rodin will move forward for the random event. event. Uh, <laughs> move the white lion one space toward the survivors on the hunt board. If it moves into the survivor space, white lion ambushes. If the white lion ambushes, skip... Okay, so we're doing another random hunt event, and he's coming closer, so we won't have to do this. Well, I'll put it right here. But he's going to be there, so after we do after we do this, and after we do Overwhelming Darkness, we will fight the Giga Lion. 33. 33. It whispers your name. The event revealer trips over a protruding nose in the ground. The lips of the stone face begin to move. The event revealer has no name. The lips stop moving and nothing else happens. Otherwise, the lips seductively whisper the survivor's name. If the event revealer is insane, they are drawn in, savagely kissing the face. Repulsed and outraged, the other survivors suffer one brain event damage before pulling the crazed survivor from the ground and moving on. Okay, everybody just suffered one brain damage. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that brings Aurora down to four insanity. Rodin down to ten insanity. Victor down to four insanity. And Arrow didn't have any insanity, and she can't take, can't suffer uh, severe injuries on the hunt, so she can't you can't get uh, brain trauma. So that is that. Now we do Overwhelming Darkness. So Overwhelming Darkness, since we have not done it before, is when you reach this space on the hunt here, it's marked, and then you do Overwhelming Darkness. So uh, there are three paths that you can travel for Overwhelming Darkness. The Path of the Insane, Path of the Doomed, or the Path of the Brave. Insane survivors walk this path, the path of insanity. They have three plus courage, then we walk the path of the brave instead. So let's see who's got three courage and is insane. So Aurora is insane and has three courage, so she'll walk the path of the brave. Um, Kenna has a ton of courage, five courage. She'll watch, walk the path of the brave. Um, is anybody tinkerer, matchmaker, and prepared? So no one can, no one's got that thing where we can, um, I forget what it's called, where they can make people use their roles. So, so we've got three people walking the path of the brave because they all have enough courage. Um, Arrow here 
does not have enough courage. <laughs> and she's also not insane. They're, she's neither insane and she, she's Path of the Doomed. Um, for Arrow here. Okay, so we'll roll for her first for Path of the Doomed, because that's a different chart than everyone else. Here we go. Path of the Doomed. Seven. Uh, you choke on the atmosphere. It leaves you sick and unbalanced. Lose monster level survival and gain minus one evasion token. Okay, so she's going to lose two survival because the Giga Lion is a level two. Um, I, didn't put, I didn't actually put her survival on yet, but she had five, so she's down to three. And what was the other thing? And gain a minus one evasion token. Okay. Um, okay, that sucks. So she's got a minus one evasion. Put this on her evasion. So she's at zero evasion now because she has a natural one. Okay. Now everyone else does the um, Path of the Brave. So here we go with Path of the Brave for everyone else. So here we go. First is Aurora. You find a half dead survivor covered in translucent moths. Ignore them, losing one courage, or spend all your survival to save them, gaining plus one population. Okay, what are we going to do here? I guess she's going to lose her one courage. So she's... Aurora's going to lose one courage because I don't want to spend all her survival. Definitely don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, next was for Kenna. Uh, that's a five. Okay, um, or I don't know why I can't read this five. A massive whale swims overhead. Your guts quiver with its booming cries. You vomit in fear, but keep a brave face. Gain minus one evasion token. After this event, all other survivors gain plus one survival. Okay. Uh, so now she's got a minus one evasion token, so she's down to two evasion. Okay, two evasion. And now Rodin. A nine. Uh, with your lantern held high, you suffer one damage to your arms. Okay, so he's down to one on his arms. Okay. That is the end of Overwhelming Darkness, and that is the end of the hunt. And now we start the showdown with the uh, Giga Lion. So, with the Giga Lion here, I forget, I did not draw the terrain cards yet. How many do I have to draw? Um, two random terrain cards. In addition to Tall Grass. So, let me take out Tall Grass first because it's already in and now we get two random terrain cards. Two random terrain cards. One. Two. Let's see what we got here. A toppled pillar and debris. So, uh, debris, we've had that once before. A toppled pillar is an obstacle. Uh, it blocks survivor and monster field of view. Interrupts ranged weapons and it's impassable. Okay, so that's it. We got debris, top of pillar, and tall grass. All right, now I will set up for the showdown. Here we are, all set up for the showdown with the Giga Lion. Uh, so the Giga Lion is effectively a level two white lion, pretty much. He's got 10 basic, five advanced, eight movement, 10 toughness, plus 1 speed, plus 1 damage. Um, then he's got 
Vicious Claws, and Giga Claws, as well as Smart Cat placed on top of the AI deck. So the way I'm doing it is he's got 10 basic, 5 advanced in his AI deck. So I make up the whole AI deck, which I've already done, and then you play Smart Cat on top of that. Meaning that it's not part of his 15 AI cards. It's a separate card. Um... Because unlike the Prologue Lion, it tells you to make up his deck with that and then place it on top. This one's worded differently, so I'm not counting it like that way you would the, the Prologue Lion. So, here are his two traits, the Giga Claws and the... So you see here the Giga Claws. Whenever the monster collides with the survivor, it snags them with its hook claws. They have suffer grab, um, and they can escape. When the survivor suffers grab, roll a d10 on a 9 plus, they are skewered and suffer bleed 1. So, not good. And then vicious. At the end of each monster turn, the monster extends its giant hook claws. Target all adjacent survivors. Full move the white giggle lion away from all other threats. All targets suffer grab. Okay, so those are his two things that he does differently. All right, so now, like I said, we reveal the first card. It's always going to be Smart Cat. So reveal the top 10 AI card one at a time. Put the first two mood cards revealed into play, then shuffle the deck. If no mood cards are drawn, then you draw another AI card, and then you archive this card. So here we go. One, oh, okay, right away. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the ninth card, ten. Just recount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, nine and ten. Okay, so on the very tenth card, it was another wound. Or another, not wound, <laughs> another mood. Okay, so now I'm just reshuffling these because it says to. Okay, so these are the two moods that are now in play. Okay, um, while Enrage is in play, the White Lion gains plus one damage token per monster level. Okay. When a survivor suffers any dismembered severe injury or is killed, Enrage is discarded. Okay, when this comes into play, okay. When a survivor suffers damage from any, for any reason, place one token on Bloodthirsty. At the start of each monster turn, remove, or if Bloodthirsty has three plus tokens, remove all tokens and perform basic action. Okay. So both those moods are going to be in play. And then Smart Cat gets archived. So it just goes over there. Okay. So... Now, that was its first turn. It put all of its moods in play. We are now done with the monster's first turn. Now, at the end of its turn, because the way Smart Cat was worded, I don't have to redraw another AI card. Because it did put moods into play. So, that was its first turn. Now, at the end of each monster turn, the monster extends its giant hooked claws. All adjacent, there's no one adjacent. Um, and then full move waking line away from all other threats. So it's just going to move away right away. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just goes all the way to the end of the board. Because it has eight movement and then stops. So that's the end of its first turn. Now it's the survivor's turn. So. Um, let's accumulate how much plus damage this thing has right now. So it's enraged. It's going to get plus 2 damage. Plus 3 damage from being a Giga Lion, level 2. Okay, so it's got plus 3 damage. It's doing plus 3 damage right now. And plus 1 speed. Okay. Now. It is a uh, survivor's turn, so we will. One, two, three, four, five, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Can move to here. 
and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, you'd be in range. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna move with Rodin. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Get him to here, and now he's gonna block. He's gonna take the block action. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Seven away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Okay. So that's the nine spaces away she needs for her range nine one shot with the Vespertine bow and the clawhead arrow to give him minus one evasion. Okay. Now to hit this thing with her one shot, it gains plus four accuracy. So it's going to be uh, two plus. Okay, that is a hit, which makes him have minus one evasion now. So now he has the minus one evasion. Okay, and we draw a hit location card, which is this. And she is going to be critting on a seven plus, wounding on a. Three plus. So wounding on a three plus, critting on a seven. It's a wound. Okay, so she wounded. Okay, it's one wound. Okay, now where else? So he's got movement eight. He's gonna probably, most likely. Yeah, so she's nine spaces away. As long as we stay nine spaces away. One, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these two are just going to stay in the um, grass there. Okay, that is um, the end of survivor's turn however what we're going to do is with Kenna here we're going to move because she's got this momentum so with momentum whenever you travel four or more spaces from movement or knockback without passing over the one you gain plus one momentum so she's just going to go one two three four five or one two three Four, just in this little circle here to end up in the same exact spot. One, two, three, oh. So she'd have to end up here, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, she'd have to end up there. So there, she gains her one momentum token. Okay. Now it's the end of the survivor's turn. Now it will be the Giggle Lion's turn. It's going to claw. Closest threat facing in range. Closest threat in field. Okay. Speed two, accuracy two plus. So one, two, three, four, five, six. He's just going to move right here. This is the closest one in range. So it's accuracy two plus. Um, he's got two evasion. So it's accuracy four plus to hit Rodin. Uh, he's got plus one speed, so it's a three plus speed. Uh, four plus. That's two hits. This is a miss. Two hits. This one's just, or well, I blocked one. So it's going to be two hits. We'll see where they go first. And then it's going to be four damage. Uh, to the head and the body. Doesn't matter for him. Actually, I just remember because he's immortal. So, he'll take the four damage. Um, just four damage because he's going to block, he blocked one. And it doesn't matter, the four damage is going to go wherever. So, he'll take the four damage to his survival. That brings him down, or it's insanity, I mean. So, he's down to six insanity. Okay. Okay, 
now it's our turn. Oh, uh, now someone took damage. So, when raging, okay. Whenever it suffers damage, plus one bloodthirsty token. So, put one bloodthirsty token over here on bloodthirsty. Okay, now, at the end of his turn, um, target all adjacent survivors. Full move away, gig line away from all other threats. Everybody suffers grab. Okay, and he's going to suffer two damage to the hands, and he's going to move full move away. Two damage to the hands. That brings him down to four insanity. Okay. Uh, five insanity, my bad. Five insanity. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Okay, so, so. Okay. So now we do one, two, three, four, five. Oh, he stands, by the way, because he's shield mastering, which he can stand at the beginning or the end of survivor's turns. One, two, three, four, five. Or wait, where do I need to go? So one, two, three, four, five. Need to be here. One, two, three. No wait. It can be here. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Okay. So now she's within five. She'll go ahead. Three speed. Uh, strength of six. He's got toughness ten. S or what am I doing? Not. I need to do accuracy. It's accuracy of six. He's got minus one evasion. That brings it down to a five. She's got plus one evasion. Brings it down to four plus to hit. It's two hits. Okay. Two hit cards. Okay. Okay. Man, that sucks. <laughs> She drew the fuzzy groin and she's probably going to crit? I don't know. Well, let's hope she doesn't crit. Okay, here we go. She's critting on a 7 plus, wounding on a 7, wounding on a 3, critting on a 7. Okay, so she just critted that. Okay, so wounding on a 3, critting on a 7, and then she critted that. So that's two crits. Uh, so the lion gains minus one accuracy from the Beast back. Okay, so that's one damage. He's going to gain minus one accuracy. Okay, that's good at least. And now this is really bad. Okay, uh, your attack destroys the, uh, the monster is livid. The white lion gains plus one damage token. So now he's got plus five damage. Yeah, he's got plus one. Plus two plus three plus four. He's got four plus four damage now. Um, okay, so the priority target. The white lion will attack the attacker until dead. Okay, so now she's got priority target. Uh, but she did another damage. This is actually really bad here. Because she's got priority target. Okay, so she's going to spend one survival to surge, hit on four plus. Those are three hits. Okay. Okay, 
First one, seven plus three wounds. It's a wound. Uh, yeah, so she gains priority target again. Seven plus four the wound, that's a wound. Uh, seven plus to crit. It's a wound. Or I mean a crit. So what happens on this critical? Uh, the monster howls in pain below, breaks its elbow with a sickening crunch. Non-death survivors gain plus three insanity. Okay, so everybody's going to gain plus three insanity. So she goes up to seven, ins or Aurora's at seven insanity. Rodin goes up to eight insanity. Um, Kenna's at seven insanity. And Arrow actually gains insanity. She goes up to three. Right, because it's just not all, all death. Yeah. Okay, so that's three wounds. Right, let me just recalculate. Six, seven, yeah. It's three wounds. <sighs> three more wounds. Um, one. Three wounds. Okay. Now, uh, can she even can she even get away? Is it even possible? He's got eight movement. One, two, three, four. She's five. So yeah, she's gonna have to dash. She's gonna have to spend another survival. One, two, three, four, five. Right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay, so she dashed away, because she's going to get targeted regardless. <laughs> okay. Um, this is really bad. Because <laughs> that's our blue savior. I don't want her to die. Um, she's really... I was really... She's really my only hope of killing this thing as well. <laughs> um... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's got seven AI cards. Possibly eight, nine, or ten hits. I don't know. Okay. Um, so what? how is he going to move? He's going to target her regardless. Um, it's Rawhide Headband. To look at the top two AI cards. Okay, raw, uh, raw high head banding with Kenna here. Okay, so he's got plus four damage as well. Closest threat facing in range. Well, it's okay, he's, he's always going to target her. So this one, Power Swat, is what we're going to do. Right? Yeah, because it's only got one speed. Yep, we're going to power swat. Okay, so power swat goes on top. Now, he's going to move eight. Actually, right now, he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's not going to make it to her. One, two. Okay, that's where he's going to go, because I, I want to move him this way. So, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. So, um, he's going to come this way, because he's going to get to here, which is closer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess that would be the closest he could get. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or would this be closer? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This would be closer. In the long run. Uh, 
Okay, but he's gonna so he's gonna come here and move to here, even though it's he can't get to her. But he's he'll trample right now as it is, he's gonna trample Rodin. So we don't want that to happen either. So Okay, so what are we going to do? So Rodin's going to have to move and block. He can't attack, he's just going to have to move and block. One, two, three, four, five. Get to here and block. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he's going to get to here and block. Okay. Now, what is he actually going to do here? He's just going to come here and then go back there. I want, I want to make sure no one's adjacent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's going to put him here. No one's adjacent as it is right now. So one, two, three, four, five. She'll go to there. Remember, that's a uh, that's Aurora moving because she already. I guess I could cat eye circle it now too because she's not going to be able to do anything. So yeah, we'll cat eye circle it. Look at the top three of the. Uh, locations this one here here and here so yeah this is how we're gonna do it so this will go on top second card third card uh, that was actually wrong should go the other way boop 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 okay so that's how we're gonna put the cards in now Kenna, she already rawhide headbanded, so now she's just going to move for five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. She's just going to go there. Okay. Now it is the monster's turn. We know exactly what he's going to do. He's going to draw power swat. He's going to target her because she's going to have priority target forever now. Uh, accuracy, or it doesn't even matter. None of this stuff matters. He can't do anything. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's going to move as close as he can, which is getting to right there. Then at the end of his turn, he's going to put his claws out, target everyone adjacent. No one's adjacent. And then he's going to move uh, back. Right? Yeah, I mean, he didn't even... Oh, would he have turned to face? I didn't think about that. Yeah, he would have turned to face. Had I actually moved him, I would have known that. So instead of moving in his path, she would have moved two, four, five. She would have moved here because she doesn't want to get trampled by him. So she would have moved here. I was messing up and assuming he was going to move straight back. But yeah, he's going to come here and then look at her because that's who he's targeting. And now he's going to turn around and run back eight. Oh, he doesn't make it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he doesn't make it all the way to the end. Right? He was one space away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he's right there. Okay. He didn't make it all the way to the edge of the board. Okay, that's his turn. Okay, now arrow, she's going to go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, five to here, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, one, two, three, four, yep, yeah. okay, so now she's going to shoot, she's got three speed, uh, six plus accuracy, he's got minus one evasion, that's five plus, she's got plus one normal evasion, that's four plus, to hit, uh, that's two hits. Okay, um, I already know what they are as well because we looked at the can I circle it? So there's a failure, um, and there's a nothing. So we'll do the nothing first. Um, seven plus to crit, seven plus to crit, three plus wound. Oh, that's a crit. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, well, it's, okay, so minus one movement. Man, there are so many tokens I have to do on this stupid thing. Okay, so let's reiterate. He's got... I don't have enough tokens. I gotta grab some more tokens here. Okay, so he's got minus one movement, minus one accuracy. All right, sorry, I had to grab some more tokens. Okay, uh, he's got plus four damage as well, but... Um, Okay, so the minus one movement's actually nice. Oh, so that's a wound. Okay. The next one is a three plus to hit, seven plus to wound. Oh my gosh, that's another critical. Uh, okay. Strike at the white lion, stout heart. You gain one random white lion resource. Oh my gosh, if I can roll a ten, he dies instantly. Great. Okay, so I get a, a random white lion resource. That's another wound. A uh, random white lion resource. Okay, great cat bone. Um. Do I not have my little notepad? Usually I have a little note thing. Okay, whatever, I don't have it right now. So we'll just... <sighs> Great cat bone. Just mark that there for now. Okay. Man, that would have been amazing had I just killed him outright. Man, that would I would have been really happy. Okay, so that's two more. Just... Okay. Now we surge. Yeah, we surge with her. So she'll spend a survival. We surge in. <laughs> uh, wait. Yes, before we surge in. Should I cat I I'm not I'm not gonna cat I circle it. Um, I know what one of those cards is because I only drew two of them. And I'd rather cat I circle it after her when one of these two goes because they're gonna be standing next to him, which is gonna be a lot worse for the trigger the trap than what she is. <laughs> okay. Um so if I trigger the trap with her, that's whatever. I'd rather with her. She's at far range anyway than one of these two is going to get right on top of him. Okay, so he's she's just going to surge. I'm not going to cat I circle it. Okay, uh, what I say? Six accuracy. He's got minus one evasion. That's five accuracy. He's got one natural evasion. Four plus to hit. Uh, that's two more wounds. Or hits, not wounds. Damn. One of these is impervious. I mean, she's been critting like crazy, so... Still. Okay, here we go. Um, three plus to... Oh, it doesn't matter. I have to crit on this one, so it doesn't matter. Uh, that's a... Yeah, that's a crit. Oh my gosh. Uh, so you can crit, but it doesn't cause a wound because it's impervious, right? Cannot be wounded. A wound or critical hit will not remove an AI card. Yeah, so this doesn't remove an AI card, but I got the Shimmering Mane. Okay, Shimmering Mane. Okay. Uh, and she gains plus one strength token. Oh. Okay, that actually helps. Now she actually wounds on a two. <laughs> she was wounding on a three, now she wounds on a two. So that's actually really helpful. Uh, so now she only misses on a one. So wounding, yeah, so she's got six strength with the Vespertine bow, two natural strength, that's an eight. No, oh, yeah, so she needs two. Uh, and then seven plus to crit. That's a nine. This this was an eight that got knocked over. This is another critical. Um, oh my. 
So he's going to get knocked down regardless. Or he's going to die. Knock down regardless or die. Knock down. <laughs> so he's knocked down, but this one does a wound. Okay. Um, now he's knocked down. Now that's super interesting here. This damn rock. Because if he, if I wouldn't have had the rock, stupid Rodin has to carry around that level and rock. If he wouldn't have had to do that, I would have put the cat eye circle on him. But since he's obvious, well, you know what? I didn't know that it was going to be like this. Where he was going to just be doing pretty much nothing all round. So, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know what? I never would have put the cat eye circle on him regardless. Because I would have always wanted to block. And he can't spend survival since he's immortal. So, yeah. <laughs> As nice as it would have been now, I never would have actually done that in actual practice. So I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now he's knocked down, which is crazy. So he's knocked down. Okay, the trap will make him stand. So who actually... Oh, well, uh, Aurora needs to wound with this and tooth. Now's the best chance, like, ever. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Okay, Aurora. Now's your best chance ever to get your wound with this. Okay, um, monster's knocked down, so everything hits on a three plus. So, here we go, fist and tooth. Uh, speed two, hitting on a three plus. Yeah, okay, so two hits. Oh. That's the new one. That is the new card for the Giggle Lion specifically. Uh, the Flabby Paunch protects the monster's vital organs. Plus five toughness to wound this location. Okay. Leaps into the air. Place the monster so the attacker is in the purple space. Okay, I'll have to look at this. Uh, she can crit on a 9. I mean, I've already used up all my luck, but she can crit on a 9. <laughs> uh, it would be crazy if she crits on a 9, but... What does she actually wound on? Oh, sh there's no way in hell she can wound this thing. It's got a plus 5 toughness now. Uh, yeah. She's got a 2 strength. <laughs> she can't wound it? So she can't wound it. So if I can crit, that's amazing. was a two. <laughs> I hit the card and it was a two. So yeah. Uh, now the reflex. So I gotta look at this. How do I do this? So this one's gonna be cancelled anyway. Um, so wait. The white giggle lion leaps into the air. Place the monster so the attacker is in the purple space. Full move the monster forward in a straight line. Okay. Wait a minute. He's knocked down. All reflexes are canceled. <laughs> I just realized that. Yeah, he's knocked down. He, all his reflexes are canceled. So, yeah. So she still sucked and got a two on this. So whatever. It's a miss. Uh, she can actually hit this one. Not very likely, but she actually can. She's got a two strength. He's got a ten toughness. Uh, she wounds on an eight, crits on a nine. Oh, she crit this one. Uh, gain a random white lion injury. White lion's intestine hang from the wound dragging on the floor. Start of every monster turn before it draws an AI card. Roll a 1d10. On a result of 1, the monster suffers a wound. Okay. So I'll remember this as persistent injury. Um, that was a wound. That's one AI card. She gets a proficiency in fist and tooth. Um... Oh, uh, you know what? I didn't even set aside these other persistent injuries. I just gave them tokens. Let me see if any of these other ones are actually persistent injuries. I did not wound this. Yeah, okay, so the lost Ding Dong was a persistent injury, which is should have been kept in play. My bad. I should have kept that in play. Um... 
Okay. My bad. I should have kept that in play. Okay. So now that's all done. All reactions are canceled because he's knocked down. Only the trap will make him stand. So now... Yeah, Aurora, whatever. She's going to surge to Cat Eye Circlet to look at these next three. One, two, three. Oh my gosh, the trap is not in here. Yeah, think about it. When you add, when the Giggle Line puts in hit location cards, it actually like makes them a little bit weaker because it makes the trap one card less. It makes the hit location deck one card bigger. I mean, granted, that was a... Sh really bad reflex that I was unavoidable had he not been knocked down, but, um, okay. So, yeah, all these are going to be canceled if I can just get some hits. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let me look at those top three again. I'm going to put them back. I shouldn't think like that. I'm going to put this one on top. These were them again. Put this one on top because this is, these two are the ones I want cancelled. Because if this one stays there, the likelihood of um, arrow failing is less. So if, this, like, if I can't get to this one, it's fine. So the one with the reflex, if I can hit with Kenna now, the ref, I want reflex on top, then a wound on top, then failure if I can't even get to it. Okay. So... Now she surged, can I? Re now she's surging to dash. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I forgot, I gotta dash with her too. So Arrow's gonna spend her last survival to dash. One, two, three, four, five. Or, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. She's gotta get as far away as possible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, because he's only got seven now, he's not gonna be able to get to her. Okay, perfect. Um, now Kenna. One, two. She'll go here. Two. No, why even? She'll just go three. Why even bother? Because she's going to attack with a spear. Um, from two spaces away. She doesn't need to be adjacent to him. So, uh, speed two. 3+, plus because he's knocked down. That's 2. Oh my gosh, that's a perfect hit! Uh, perfect hit. Kenna actually benefits from perfect hits. Kenna, what do you got going on for perfect hits? Uh, on a perfect hit, she's got Mighty Strike, so she's going to gain plus 2 strike. Or plus 2 strength. Uh, awesome. Okay. She's got plus 2 strength for these 2 hits which we know what these are. Uh, all reflexes are canceled because he's knocked down. So she's got a plus two strength. So King Spear has a strength of three. She has a strength of two. That's five. Seven strength. Um, yeah, so seven strength. So then she was wounding on three plus. Critting on tens only. Three plus. That's a wound. Three plus. That's a crit. Oh my gosh, that's a crit. Uh, minus one toughness token. Oh my gosh, I have so many tokens. I need to go get another token. Uh, minus one toughness token. Oh, I have, I'll just use one of these. Minus one toughness. Uh, so that's a two. Discard one. I have to reshuffle the AI deck. He's only got two hits left. Theoretically, I kind of could kill him if I surge now. I mean, it's really likely, because I know what the next one is. Yeah, what the hell? Kenna's going to surge. So she got her spear proficiency. Kenna's going to surge. Uh, what I say? It's a three plus to hit, because he's knocked down. It's two hits. It wasn't a perfect hit, though. It does make her a little less. Oh, damn. 
So he stands up now with this stupid clever ploy. Damn. Well, you know what? I had to, you ha I had to do it. Right? I had to do it. I had to. I had to do it because I could have killed him. Okay. Um, yeah, I had to do it. It's best now. Okay, here we go. Uh, the attacker is caught in the white lion's ruse and suddenly mauled. Attacker is doomed. Perform basic action. Target the attacker. This is really good. Um, yeah, so basic action targeting the attacker. Good thing is, he doesn't move any closer. <laughs> he doesn't need to move closer. That's, so now he stands... He actually moves one space away. He actually moved one space away from um, the person he was supposed to attack anyway. So this really here, she just needs to live through this, basically. Here we go. Just live through this. So basic attack. Whew. Basic attack. For the Giggle Lion. Is... Speed 2, accuracy 2, damage is quite insane. <laughs> Speed 2, accuracy 2 plus, uh, she's got 2, ag two evasion. So it's accuracy 4 plus, he's got a minus 1 accuracy token, 5 plus. Yeah, that's one hit. She can't do anything about this, she can't dodge because she's doomed. Uh, I mean, there's nothing, I mean, it's going to be a severe, so a waste, severe, because he does an insane amount of damage, he's doing four damage plus to the, five damage to the waste, okay, yeah, I don't have that, five damage to the waste, that's a, that's a heavy, so she's knocked down, uh, that's, I mean, that's a severe, it just blows right through everything. Here we go. Severe waste for Kenna. Severe waste for Kenna. Um, where is it? This chart. Okay, Kenna, severe waste. An eight? That's actually not that bad. Uh, you cannot surge until showdown ends. Slashed back. Gain one bleeding token. Okay, one bleeding token for Kenna. Uh, she's knocked down. Now, it's the lion's actual action now, which is power swat. But, he's going to always target her. So, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's his movement. So one or doesn't one two three four five six seven. He's gonna get to here. Bloop. Okay, because he's always gonna target her, and he can't make it to her. Now at the end of his turn. Uh, I mean, I can just leave this up. It's gonna be power swat regardless. Now at the end of each turn, oh, he gains another one of these tokens for bloodthirsty. What is it? Um. Yeah, we're uh, vicious here. The end of each monster turn extends. Target all adjacent survivors full of the white line away from all other threats. Ooh. So actually, he's just going to go down here. Ooh, this is really bad now if I don't kill him because now she's not going to be able to get that far away from him. So he's actually going to move to here and stop because that's full move away because he hits the board edge and he couldn't move that way. Oh, wait, he could have moved that way. She's knocked down. She's not a threat. Um, so yeah, he could move back seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Back to exactly right where he was. Because <laughs> she's technically not a threat. She's knocked down. Okay. Um. Okay, here we go. I just reshuffled the deck. Should I cat? I'm going to cat I circle it. Cat I circling. Just in case it's the trap again, it's not. So there's no trap in sight. This is on a failure. 
So that, that will be the third one down. So we'll do this one with nothing, then the wound one, and then this one. Because if I wound him, he's only got two health left, so if I wound him, he dies. It's not even going to be a reaction anyway. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Or what am I doing? One, two, three, four, five. So it has to get to here. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Here, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Okay. Uh, here she goes. Speed three. Accuracy six plus. He's got minus one evasion. Down to five plus. She's got plus one accuracy. Four plus. That's two. Two hits is all I need. <laughs> well, I need to wound. Uh, so I know what these two are. Uh, so this one first. Okay. Um, now he's got a minus one toughness because of that thing stayed in play. Oh, I shuffled those back in there. <sighs> Why did I do that? All right. All right, I have to I have to fix this. This shouldn't be like this. Sorry, I had to fix this. I just realized I shuffled those two persistent injury cards back in there, which shouldn't have been in there. Because it should they otherwise I'm adding to the deck and making it so un less less likely. Beast paw, right? No, what did I? Persistent injury, here it is. Yeah, this is the one, the soft belly, where its intestines were on the floor. Okay, that one needs to stay out, and then the uh, fuzzy groin needs to stay out. Okay, now I need to reshuffle, because it could be the trap now on top. Because those shouldn't have been in here, they make the deck thicker. Okay, now I would cat eye circle it. Oh, see, look at that. Good thing I, I fixed it. It would have been the trap again. That was a this, good thing I saw this mistake. Now, because I would have cat I circled it, this would go down to here, and I would only draw these two cards on her two hits. Whew, good thing I saw that. Um, okay. So, oh, now there's a failure reaction, though. Ugh. Well, it's got to be a one. I mean, I only fail on a one. Let me just confirm. Six strength. He's got minus one toughness? No. Six strength. She's got two strength. It's eight. Yeah, so she wounds on a two, crits on a seven. Wounds on a two, crits on a seven. That's not a crit. Wounds on a two, crits on a seven. Oh! <gasps> No, wait, why would I? This one should have been first, because I don't want the wound reaction first. That'd be dumb. I want the failure reaction. Um, now, what I say? Oh, yeah, wounds on a two, crits on a seven. Yeah. So then the wound, wound reaction would have taken place. Because I never would have wanted the failure reaction, or the wound reaction first, because I wanted to wound him. Okay, so that's two wounds. One. And then two, um, let's make sure here Ranger shouldn't have went back into the deck, right? No, because she didn't suffer a dismembered injury. Hmm. Okay, so that's the end of the Giga Lion. Um, okay. Now, yeah, good thing you always want to carry a circlet first. I can't believe that, that it would have been right on the top. But then again, yeah, you never know. The trap could actually be anywhere. You never know. Okay, so then. Uh, rewards. So, where did I put the book? Way over here. Rewards for killing the Giggle Lion are... Um, here. Rewards. First time the Giga Lion is defeated, uh, add the Giga Catarium, uh, Giga Catarium settlement location. 
and the group gains following resources. Five basic, seven white lion, and one hooked claw. And everybody gains two um, hunt experience and one weapon proficiency. So the only people who wounded were obviously Arrow. So she gets her two... Or she gets her uh, bow specialist. Now she gains two hunt experience. Does she gain double experience or she gain just one extra hunt experience? I gotta quickly look up Savior. I forget now. Yeah, where's Savior? One additional. So there's just one additional. Okay, so she's actually gonna gain three experience. Still. Uh, that's gonna trigger age for her. So let's do age for arrow. Age one. Um, age. 2d10. For, this is for arrow, age. Uh, 13, age one, 13. Random fighting art. Okay, let's go random fighting art. Sneak attack. Doesn't really matter for her, but here you go. Sneak attack. It's a cool one. I like it. I think it's one of the better ones. Uh, when you attack from Monster's Blind Spot, you gain plus four strength. Doesn't matter for her because she's using bows, but she's got sneak attack. It's really good for like a fist and tooth user or something. Really good. This is just really good in general, unless you got someone who's honorable, and for some reason our settlement has a lot of honorable people who can never attack um, Okay, now Victor gains two, or not Victor, it's Kenna. Kenna is going to gain two uh, hunt experience. That's going to trigger age two for her. Okay, triggering age two for Kenna. Nine. Age two, permanent strength. Uh, it's gonna put her at three strength. <gasps> oh man. Now that, oh man, see this is the problem. I need to fix this. So with Kenna here, now that I flipped, cause she's on the back, see how I have this? Kenna and Aurora on the same card. Um, so when I take them both out, I usually leave up Aurora's side up. I don't know why I should really leave up Kenna. She's got a lot more stuff. But anyway, what I just realized here is Kenna's actually honorable, and she could never attack Knockdown. And she did attack this thing when she was knocked down. So um, what I'll have to do is when I get... When I got Prey that erased replaced one disorder and I got rid of Hoarder. I should have gotten rid of Honorable. So I'm gonna have to put back Hoarder. So that's how I'm gonna have to fix that. So that still sucks. Uh, so I'll have to get rid of, so she got rid of Honorable. So she's still a Hoarder. So now I still lose one resource. That sucks. But at least I got rid of Honorable, because Honorable was bad. Okay. All right, so. Okay, that sucks. So, yeah. So when I got Prey, I should have gotten rid of Honorable and kept Hoarder. So, okay. Let me just put this here. She's got seven Insanity. Okay, now let's do Rodin. He's going to gain two hunt experience. It's going to age him up. Age two as well. Uh, what is that? 
15, age 2, uh, random fighting art. No, wait, 15. Permanent strength. Okay, he's at 2 strength now. And Aurora gains 2 hunt experience. She also gains fist and tooth proficiency. Uh, Kenna gained a spear proficiency, which makes her a spear specialist now. Okay. That's seen in the rewards, that's seen in proficiencies. Now we do actual resources. So, what did I say it was? It is five basic and seven white lion plus a hook claw. So, the hook claw is a strange resource. Comes with Giga Lion. There's the one hooked claw. So, we'll get that. So, there's the one hooked claw. Now, um, basic resources. Basic resources. So, it is five basic. Or no, was it five white lion, seven basic? No, five basic, seven white lion. Huh. Okay. Five basic, seven white lion. All right, here we go. Here's the five basic, and we'll do the seven white lion. One. Skull. Monster organ. Monster bone. Monster bone. Monster bone. That sucked. I really need hide. Okay. <laughs> um, seven white lion resources now. Okay, one great cat bone, two shimmering mane, three, four, four, five, six, seven. Plus the other crap that we got here. What was the other crap? Okay, so if I can now, uh, lion testicles as well. Uh, a mane. We already got shimmering mane. So we got a second shimmering mane, great cat bone, and another great cat bone. So second shimmering mane. Okay. Um, that's that. Okay, it's actually really good. <laughs> really good. So, um, now we'll set up for the settlement phase. Alright, here we are. We're all set up for the settlement phase. We got all kinds of stuff. Uh, first things to get out of the way real quick. Uh, I drew a skull. Uh, and when you get this, a survivor of your choice gets plus one insanity. So I gave that to Rodin, so he's up to 9 insanity. And Curious Hand. Um, so there's Curious Hand. When he gained this, a random survivor gets plus 1 insanity. So, uh, highest. We'll go with highest roll. So, here we go. Um, Aurora. Okay. Rodin. That's a 3. Um, what was the other one? Kenna. Oh, tie between Aurora and Kenna, and then Arrow. Okay. Aurora. Kenna. Oh, wow. Double 10 Kenna. Okay. Kenna really earned that insanity. She's up to 8 insanity. Okay. That settles those things I forgot to do. Now, the other thing was we earned a second shimmering hide from crit locations. Uh, I'm going to turn that into two monster hides, so that's where these came from. Everything else is out here. Um, I don't know exactly what we're going to spend it on. Normally I have all that stuff ready. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll see what happens, because I'm, I'm going to have to do some stuff to see if I can get things, and then if I can, we'll spend it on those. So first things first, uh, we do have a... Um, event on the settlement thing, but so we're gonna do that first, which is Regal Visit. So, Regal Visit, uh, the hand strides into the settlement. The survivors' thoughts vanish as they fall to their knees, struck dumb by this by its glorious, incomprehensible presence. Add the hand to the nemesis encounter 
list, add Nemesis Encounter the Hand level 1 to the timeline two, ne two years from now, and then inspect. So, we're going to do the inspection. So, here we go. Inspection roll. Oh, crap. Oh, that's a three. Oh, that's probably bad. Ooh. In one swift motion, the hand draws its sword, cleaving the lantern oven. Oh, not a... Mm. Crap. I needed the lantern oven because I have wanted to do scrap smelting. Oh, looks like we have to challenge... Oh, then we have to do four population. Okay, so we're going to lose lantern oven. We're going to suffer from minus four population. And we'd have to... Ch oh, wait. Uh, if the settlement is accept the darkness society principle, the hand presents to infant. Uh, we did accept the darkness, right? Uh, that's the one that gives plus two to insanity rules, right? Or brain trauma. Yeah, we did accept darkness. Awesome. So we actually have accept darkness. Uh, if the settlement has accepted darkness society principle, the hand presents two infants to the kneeling survivors. Gain plus two population. <laughs> I thought that was going to be bad. I thought a three was going to be really, really bad. Um, that's probably the only time in the world that a low roll is good. Um, wow, I thought that was going to be really bad. Okay, so we get plus two population. Um, I don't know what to do with that. Um, we'll have to... I'll just figure that out later. I'll do the plus two population later. Um, okay, so that was Regal Visit. Now we have to do Gorm Climate again. Okay, uh, same thing as always, Gorm Climate. Here we go. Eight. Um. Because we don't have storytelling, so no. The settlement struggles against uh, the quaking ground, linking arms to brace themselves against the storm. I think this might actually be how they move it up. Nominated survivor with zero hunt experience. They draw strength from the settlement termination and gain plus one courage. Oh, um, okay. So a survivor with zero hunt experience. I don't even know if we have very many of those left. I've been taking out like random people all the time. Uh, I guess it's going to be one of those new twins. Yeah, because I don't think I have anybody else. I have Chase. Sure. You know what? We're going to do Chase instead of one of those new twins. All right. So Chase is going to do that. He's going to gain what? Plus one courage, it said? Uh, yep. They gain plus one courage. Okay. Chase gains plus one courage. Cool. Good for you, Chase. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Chase is like the forgotten stepchild. <laughs> He's Ken and Kenna's brother. Um... I just never use him. <laughs> okay, now uh, the third. Now we have to draw a settlement event. Shuffle these up. I hate shuffling these. So we shuffle these up. And then we roll like we do. Um, oh, whew, one. I'm just, it's just all over the place today. Oh, no. Cracks in the ground. That's this one before. We've lost someone to this before. Uh, okay. Cracks in the ground. A low rumbling fills the settlement. Small cracks in the earth widen into fissures that belch up hot fouling smelling vapor. Okay. Uh, we've lost someone to this before, so this is really bad. Uh, a low rumbling fills the settlement. Small cracks in the earth widen. Okay. We've lost people this before. This sucks. Oh, this sucks. Uh, seven. What's a seven? You find a sharp stone in the rumble left from the quake. Gain plus one founding stone gear. Awesome. That's actually not bad. This is the one that randomly kills people, right? Yeah, that's the one that randomly kills people. That's the one we've had people die to. Okay. Lingering effects. The crack prevents all home endeavors. 
Plus one to the result of nightmare and training endeavors. I don't think we have nightmare training. Uh, cool. Okay, so we might do nightmare training if we innovate it. So we'll leave that here. Cracks in the ground. Okay, now to get down to business. Okay, so uh, Kenna is a hoarder, so she's going to take the uh, lion testicles. So we lose lion testicles because she's a hoarder. All right, let's get started then. First endeavor to innovate. So we're spending a skull, a sinew, and a white fur. Skull, sinew, white fur. First basic resource deck. Where's the basic resource deck? What did I do with it? Oh well, I'll find it later. Oh, here it is. Okay, I just didn't turn it upside down. Okay, basic, okay. Let's innovate. Uh, these are our innovations, right? Yes, these are our innovations. Okay, here we go. Let's innovate. Now we draw four of these because of Symposium. I don't even know what we're looking for, really. Um, something good. Nightmare training, I guess, maybe. Oh, my gosh. Okay, there's nightmare training. Oh, bad. I think we'll probably take... Oh, drums. That's what we're definitely taking. Uh, drums. Oh, uh, man. These are actually good for once. Okay, there's drums, which is good. Um, probably going to take drums. We also got scarification. Um... Bed would be good. And there's Nightmare Training, which would get the plus one to all rolls. So it would be a nine or a ten to really benefit. A seven plus. This still only makes it a 30% chance. Uh, I don't think it's worth getting night or cracks. Nightmare Training now just to take advantage of cracks in the ground. So we're going to get drums because I want to get rid of this Gorm Climate. Um... And Rhythm Chaser is good. So we'll get drums, and we're going to add drum consequences to this. So let me just add drum consequences, which is Forbidden Dance, which is like End Song of the Brave, which is really good. I think that's it. Yep. Next time, we'll try to get Song of the Brave. Okay, drums. Good. Now we have that in our innovation deck. I don't know if we'll do that. We might. We'll depend to see how this goes. I don't think we're going to do that this time, but drums. Perfect. That's exactly what I needed. Okay. That is our innovation. Okay. Now let's try and... So here's what I want to do. If I can, I would like to build a blacksmith. If I can, because I have so many bones right now. I have so many bones. Um, I have a skull and a regular monster bone also in storage. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bones just sitting around. Uh, but I have no scrap anywhere. <laughs> so uh, we can spend our four innovations to go uh, scrap scavenge. So I think that's what we'll do. I mean, I would need three scrap. I would... It's pretty good odds are I'm not going to get three scrap, but you know what? We can try. So I'll spend one. Um, let's see. Who's got a lot of survival? A lot of survival. Kenna has five survival. Oh, no. No, she doesn't. Who has a lot of survival? Something's going to have a lot of survival. I mean, it's not like it... Oh, here we go. Bria. Bria has five survival. I don't think... It, I mean, I'm not... Even if they, if I take her out, she gets plus four for just being a departing survivor. So, first one. We're going to do Bria. Uh, scrap scavenge. A four. I think that's bad. Uh, here, I'll move this up here, right? This is Scrap Scavenge. Yeah, Scrap Scavenge. That's four is a bad one. Yeah, it's definitely bad. 
Uh, something attacks from the darkness, spend one survival or die. Okay, she spends a survival. She's down to four. Scrap scavenge. Five. Spend one survival or die. Okay, she's, that's the end of that, okay. She spends another survival. She's down to three. She's down to two. <laughs> okay, I think I just rolled four fives. There goes all my endeavors. Okay, we got none. Um, that was such a waste of endeavors. Oh wait, I need to save one. I forgot. I need to save one. I don't want to waste all four. I, I was thinking this was my fifth one, but I had already used it to innovate. So that was a mistake. I was all, I don't want... I only want to spend three. Um, so she gets two. She's a two survival now, instead of five. Um, that was my mistake. So she's a two survival. Now with this last one, we're just going to make leather. Okay, so let's make some leather. Um, spend any number of high to an equal number of leather. Okay, any number of hide to make an even number of leather. Okay, well, first off, we, we have to get this back because we definitely need that to complete the set. So let's just spend uh, the curious hand. That's why it was separated. So we'll spend the curious hand, which counts as a hide, to make the rawhide boots to finish off the set for the rawhide boots. Um, for the tank. Now what sucks about this is um, when Rodin tanks he can't carry stone noses with him because he's got that stupid rock that he loves so much. Um, so that will be his finished gear grid. Now that completes our rawhide set so we get that back which is good. The tank now has that back. Now um, so that leaves us, we'll cash this in, the Shimmering Hide. Archive this to get two basic hide resources, so we're going to cash that for two hide resources. We'll cash these other four in to give us four leather. Or I mean these other two hide, not four, to get four leather. Okay, so cash these in. That will give us four leather. Alright, so now with four leather, let's look at the leather worker here. So, what we're going to end up doing is first making a round leather shield for one leather, one bone. Oh, we have no more hide left, so I can't make a round leather shield. Okay, so we have, so that's fine. We won't do that. We can make... Um... Can make a leather curious or curious, um, which will probably do that. A leather skirt, yeah. So, we'll make a leather curious and a leather skirt. So, that takes two of our leather and one bone, okay. Whatever, one monster bone, okay. So leather curious leather skirt. We'll make that real quick. Let me get those out. Like I said, sorry, I didn't have all this stuff ready because I had literally no idea what it was I was going to do because had I gotten that for scrap, I would have definitely done something different. Um, or had I gotten three of the four, three scrap with our four three innovations. So, um, leather skirt. And leather cuirass, so leather cuirass. Here's the leather cuirass and a leather skirt. All right. So that leaves us with two more leather left, which, in all honesty, we'll probably just save. So leather skirt, leather cuirass. Okay. I don't have any scrap, right? No scrap whatsoever. Yeah, I actually have one iron, <laughs> but no scrap. Um, okay, let's look at the weapon crafter. Any of this stuff would I actually want to build? Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't think so. I guess... I mean, I guess I just have to save this stuff because I want to build a leather crafter. I still definitely want to do that. <sighs> or not the, the blacksmith. I want to build a blacksmith and I've got so many bones and there's really nothing I can do with them. Yeah. I mean, I guess I just saved them. <laughs> what a lot of stuff that I just cannot really use right now. Um, so, should I... Sucks, because I really, really wanted to build that shield, but I don't have a hide. Um, I'll get one before I fight the hand. Okay, so... That's it, really. <laughs> um... Didn't really improve very much. Completed my leather or completed my rawhide set and started the leather one, but what a bad draw here. Like we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven extra bones. Like what a bad draw. <laughs> okay. Uh there is I mean I could make the club the counterweight axe, right? No, I wouldn't mean the hide for that too. Okay. Um that will do it. <laughs> what a weird settlement event. Um, thank you very much for watching. It's always uh, very humbling for everybody who watches. I can't thank you enough. So I'll see you in the next Lantern Year.